Hi there, welcome to another video on this channel. My name is Prabhjot Kaur. In today's video, we are going to continue to read another paper in the domain of direct speech to speech translation. So, without further ado, let's get started. The paper that we are going to study today is called Translatotron 2 High Quality Direct Speech to Speech Translation with Voice Preservation. This is a paper that was published by Google in 2022. Now, before we dive deeper into the Translatotron 2 model, I want to highlight that in one of the previous videos on this channel, we studied a model called Translatotron 1. So, I want to highlight what that model looks like briefly before we dive deeper into Translatotron 2. So this is the paper that presented the original Translatotron model, Translatotron 1 to be specific. This was also published by Google in 2019. And this model consists of encoder decoder architecture. Both of these are based on LSTMs. It also contains the multi head attention. And this model is also able to preserve the speaker's voice. However, it uses speaker encoder to do so. Additionally, this model uses the auxiliary recognition tasks to predict phonemes during the training. Now, this model was one of the first models for direct speech to speech translation. However, the performance of this model was below the cascade based models that we have. So, authors came up with this new model called Translator Tron 2, and they claim that this Translator Tron 2 model outperforms the original Translator Tron by a big margin. So we want to study what this translatotron model looks like. So briefly, it contains an encoder, a decoder, and a synthesizer. And all of these are connected through a single attention module. And authors also propose a new method for preserving speaker's voice. Now let's get directly to the page that discusses the model itself. All right. So the overall architecture of the Translatotron model looks like Translatotron 2 looks like this. And the authors say that the overall architecture is what gave them better performance. So they, they say that uh, it's not that what components we use to make up this encoder, decoder, or attention, but it is actually the overall architecture that gave them the better performance. However, I want to go into the details of what are the components of this encoder, decoder, and synthesizer, meaning what are these, what are the subunits that make up the encoder, decoder architecture? So let's go into the detail of that first. Okay, so for the encoder, the authors used conformer layers. And if you don't know what a conformer is, it's basically an architecture that combines transformer and convolution, CNN. I have a video on this that I made not too long ago. So if you want to study the details of the conformer, uh, here I will provide a link to that video here. So the encoder in this paper is composed of conformer uh, layers. And then the decoder is composed of LSTMs. And this attention is the multi-head attention from the transformer paper. And then if you look here, if you are familiar with the attention mechanism, there is a query, and then for that query, we need to get the key and the value pair. So, query is made by the decoder, and the key and the value comes from the encoder. Oops. Key comes from the Okay, I'm not sure what happened to my screen. Uh, so let me exit drawing and then 
and then come back to this again. Perfect. Okay, so now my R handwriting is gone, but basically let me repeat. So encoder consists of conformers and decoder consists of LSTMs and the attention, the decoder makes the query and then key value pairs come from the encoder. And then this synthesizer is what is used to synthesize the speech. So if you look at the, the architecture here, so the input is the smell spectrogram in one of the languages, in this case Spanish. And then the decoder predicts the phonemes in the target language, which is English. So, so I just want to highlight again. So we are going from the spectrogram in one language to phonemes in another language. So what's a phoneme again? So phoneme is nothing but uh, it. Uh, these are the subunits that make up a word. So for example, if you have cat, then the phonemes would be, would be cat. So that's what we are predicting here. That's what the decoder is doing. And then we have a synthesizer. This synthesizer is what is synthesizing the spectrogram. So we take the spectrogram in Spanish, and then we have the attention module. Attention is driven by the decoder, but the output of the attention, it goes to both of the decoder and the synthesizer. And the synthesizer is able to predict the spectrogram in the target language, which in this case is English. So that's really what the uh, transformer two architecture looks like. Okay, so let's let's go into the details of um, things that maybe I didn't describe yet. So another highlight that we saw from the architecture here is that the model is jointly trained with speech to speech translation objective and speech to phoneme translation objective. What they mean by that is because if you look at this branch going from encoder to the decoder we are doing the prediction from spectrogram to phoneme and then if we look at this branch we are going from spectrogram to uh, spectrogram so this is a joint uh, training mechanism that they are using so again the the performance the better performance in translator tron it mainly comes from the high level architecture rather than the choice of each individual components and then we've already discussed this. The speech and encoder consists of a transformer and the decoder consists of LSTMs. Now for the acoustic synthesizer, uh, they, all they want to say is that the uh, acoustic synthesizer, it takes the intermediate input from the decoder and it, it also gets the attention output and it's able to generate a spectrogram. So that completes the translation aspect of it. The other thing that is proposed in this paper is a new technique for voice preservation. So if you remember the model that I just showed you for translators on one, for voice preservation, the authors used a speaker encoder. However, for translator Tron 2, the voice preservation is, is done differently. So what they do here is they train a neural network model called PNGNAT with a data set that they created for this task. So the data set in this case consists of a single speaker that is able to speak in both languages. So for example, let's say we want the data set to contain both English and Spanish. So we would ask one speaker to speak the same sentence in English and in Spanish. So they created these parallel utterances with the same speaker to train the neural network, neural network model for voice preservation. I, I want to highlight that in order to create this data set, they actually used a TTS model. So they didn't, they didn't actually use it, the actual humans to create this data set. It was a synthetic data set that they created for this task. So that's for voice preservation. This translator model was tested and trained on three different data sets, conversational, Fisher, and Covost 2. Conversational and Fisher data sets were also used for translator 1, and it consists of Spanish and English 
speech. The co-host 2, on the other hand, is a multilingual data set. So this was used to test the model for uh, translating from four different languages to English. Another thing that I want to highlight is a data augmenta augmentation technique called Concat Aug. So there's a concept called speaker terms. What that means is, so let's say we have our audio and there are two different speakers, more than one, could be more than one. So, so the audio contains a voice of more than one speaker and let's say they are, take, they are speaking in sequence. So let's say it's a two second audio and for one second speaker one is talking and for another second speaker two is talking. So that's what we mean by speaker terms. So in order to test the voice preservation on a more challenging data set or more challenging scenario called speaker turns, they created a data set by using a technique called concat aug. This is actually a very simple technique. So what they do is in their original data set that contains um, English and Spanish, so they randomly took these sample samples from their original data set in both um, source speech and the target speech and they put them together they concatenate, concatenated these to create a data set for speaker terms i just wanted to highlight this new technique called concat i uh, concat aug for data augmentation so now this translator on model was tested on three different data sets that we that we mentioned before and this was tested for the translation quality, which is measured in terms of the BLEU scores, and it was also tested for the translation, um, this the speech robustness and the quality. So that's using uh, the these two metrics. This model was compared with the original translator tron model, and also the cascade approaches, and we can see that translator tron two. It does have the it does have better performance so as you can see if if we use just translator tron 2 then the translation uh, correctness is 55.6 and if we use the concat aug the translation correctness is 55 but compared to the translator tron 1 uh, the scores is higher so this model still underperforms the baseline approaches, but the difference is less compared to the translator of drawn one model. Okay, let's see what else we need to go through. I know I'm skipping a lot of details and I actually high in, highly encourage you to read the paper if you're interested. But in this video, I wanted to mainly wanted to highlight the model architecture. The idea is that when we read these different papers, we understand the gist of it, so that we have an idea of what the what the where the research is in this field. Okay, so to conclude, this translator tron model outperforms the translator tron one by a good margin, and this model consists of the encoder, decoder synthesizer and all of these three are connected by a single attention module and the authors also provide a new technique for voice preservation that is all for the translator tron 2 model for this video and again if you are subscribed to this channel thank you if you are not and like the content of this channel please consider subscribing that's the one way you can help me to make more videos it just gives me a little more encouragement to keep them making and i hope you find the content useful with that thank you i'll see you in the next video